Thank you, Bob. Um, it's, it's tough to go later in the program because many people have said much of what, what I already would have said, you know, the facts and figures about uh, the impact of arts funding in communities and so forth. And uh, Hill Harper said something I want to reference later on about this very building. Uh, but I just want to begin by saying uh, uh, two things. When I come to these events here, and I know there's going to be other uh, great artists, especially from my business here, it's not lost on me that it's a real opportunity for me. This is an opportunity for me. And today it's really the trifecta. We've got Rocco Landsman here, the great producer. I want to recommend, by the way, that Rocco Landsman, who's one of the producers of Book of Mormon, he and I are going to be having lunch later on to talk about Rocco giving us money from the profits of Book of Mormon to settle the national debt. To settle the national debt. A Broadway musical will actually get us back to solvency here in America. Um, hard to believe. Um, at the same time, we have uh, uh, Melina uh, Kanakaridis here and uh, Jonathan Sheck and uh, 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 Rocco, uh, which all comes together well for me. Rocco, we're going to be doing a production of Betrayal on Broadway next year. We're going to be doing the Pinter play, the three of us together. So, um, you know, uh, Hill Harper mentioned something that I have said many times before, which is, you know, this building itself is a work of art and a statement about our cultural and artistic legacy. And uh, as we often know, the disconnect between uh, elected officials and their constituency has probably never been greater than it is today because, uh, you know, they got a pretty nice place they work in. They got a real nice place they work in. And you and I pay for it. They don't pay for it. And you want to say to them, you know, why don't we just sell this place to Trump and turn it into a condo? and build some little squat red brick buildings out there in Virginia. You guys go to work out there every day. You know, we, we, we have this edifice. We, we maintain this building. We're actually, you know, at their authority because we want to make a statement about what's important to us. But I don't want that statement to end here. Our cultural and artistic legacy has to go beyond the, uh, you know, well-appointed corridors of Congress. Um, so I, I, I wanted to thank Hill for mentioning that uh, as well. Um, we know the stats. We know all about the economic impact. Um, we know the benefits in education and test scores when uh, arts programs are brought to as many corners of this country as we can. We know the powerful impact that arts programs, especially the ones that are funded in communities that don't have a lot of their own resources around this country. Uh, we know the impact it has on community on communities themselves. I live in one of the great arts communities in the world. I live in New York. Being a New Yorker is, 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 uh, is, is wonderful and maddening because you live a constant life of where you sit there and go, damn, I missed the Matisse exhibit again. <laughs> you know? They come into town, they come rolling. The Bacon exhibit closed again, God. You know, they come rolling into the Met, they come rolling into MoMA, there's so much to do, there's so much to see. In New York, you're just choking on options. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's the curse of options there, Broadway shows, musicals. I said to someone, they said to me, what do you love about your business? I said, and I, and I wasn't being corny, because I think the other artists in the room will recognize this. I said, what I love about my business is you close your eyes, if you close your eyes at about eight o'clock at night in New York, and you close your eyes and listen, Right at that moment, the curtain is going up on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stages, and the greatest artists in the world are performing at the same moment in time. Ballet, opera, symphony, the theater. And that contribution that's made by those people admits it's a big part of what makes New York what it is. New York is by no means a one-horse town. You know, it's not like Washington or Los Angeles, where there are many diverse businesses, but one business in particular dwarfs and eclipses everything else. New York is kind of a mountain range with many uh, uh, mountains of equal footing, finance, publishing, media. The entertainment business, the culture business is not predominant in New York by any means, but it's important. It's important. It's important there. Um, uh, I can't read my own handwriting. Do they have a federal grant for penmanship that I could apply for? <laughs> I can't read my own handwriting. Um, uh, I just want to close with this. I, mean, I, don't, I don't want to go on and on and on, but I want to say, for me, um, let me close my share. 
terms of improvements as they call cash and cultural heritage. Sorry. I had a good paragraph there, and I can't read it. It's a kind of a, I did take Chinese penmanship, and it's a, I did quite well here. Um, I want to just finish by suggesting, because I did speak at the press club yesterday, I did speak at the uh, uh, Nancy Hanks, I just want to say, you know, I want to suggest that, uh, you know, many elected officials, I think they suffer from something when it comes to their relationship with the arts. There's a kind of an envy. I'll let you, I'll let you fill in what adjective you want to use. It doesn't have to be any body parts. There's a blank envy. Uh, that uh, I think elected officials have when it comes to the reality of the role of arts in our lives. Um, uh, and that is that, uh, you know, when people die, when you get to the end of this life, I don't think you lay there and say, God, this life has been amazing. I'll never forget when the Federal Reserve kept those interest rates low. <laughs> it was such an important part of my life, you know? I'll never forget when my congressman voted for or against the stimulus money, whichever the case may be. People don't lie there at the, at the end of their life and think about politics. I mean, maybe if you spent a, well, a career in the military, you might think about your, 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 your career in the military, if you will. But when people die, from my experience, when they come to whatever moment where they reflect on their lives, of course, the first thing they think about are their loved ones. Their spouses, their parents, their children, their siblings, their friends, their lovers, their dogs, their gardens, whatever landscape vista is important to them, the beach they lived on. But they also think about the lyrics to a song that was important to them. They think about a scene from a film. They think about a poem or a passage from a great piece of literature. They think about a painting that to them hung in their home or was something that they coveted that defined beauty in their lives. We realize, you and I, what we have in common is that not only in the end, not only in the end in the final analysis, but perhaps at the end, at the very end, we realize that the arts are more important than anything for most Americans. Thank you very much for coming.